Hi everyone, it's lovely to be here and I've got some good news. I've got some really simple, fully accessible, easy to comprehend ideas for you. You've heard some incredible things today um, and really kind of test the brain power that we all have. I'm not going to do that to you. I'm not going to test you at all. I'm going to give you some lovely thoughts, hopefully, for you to take away and hopefully for you to start thinking about how you might change the world. Um, the first thought I have, the first kind of surprise I think I'd like to share with you is um, around charities. I'm really lucky. I work for an incredible um, charity um, and um, it struck me quite early on um, in my career that actually charities are well known for being really agile, really entrepreneurial, really different about way, the way they, things, they do things because they have to move quickly to reach the far end. They have to move quickly to change things and make things happen. Um, but they also are thought of quite commonly as being um, fluffy, doing good stuff, not thinking about business principles. And that's just not true. That's just not true. We wouldn't be here today if we didn't operate like a business. We are a business. Um, charities have to comply with financial um, compliance. They have to comply with HR, employment law legislation. They have to think about health and safety. They have to think about all of those hard-nosed business principles that a business does, but they also have to think about some of the softer stuff as well. So some of the things that perhaps aren't so obvious um, in running a business, but you have to think about those, whether it's a charity or a business. Um, and the thing that I want to share with you today is the journey that we've been on um, at our charity um, around um, the marketplace, about our brand, about how we communicate. Because marketing communication is critical for a business. It's even more critical, I think, for a charity. Because we have to not only find out what the marketplace wants, make sure that we're delivering what the marketplace needs, and then communicate that to very often very complex um, people having very, living very complicated lives. When I first came to Challengers, this was the logo that um, I saw. So before I actually came to visit um, the organisation, I received a raft of paperwork. There was a website with information on, and this logo kind of um, went all the way through that. Um, I haven't told you anything about what the charity I work for does, and on purpose. I'd like you to have a look at that and think about the kind of organisation it might be, because this was really clear to me um, when I first came here that actually I was confused, really, really confused. I looked at that logo and I thought, well, it's blue, navy blue. Um, it's probably very sensible, um, probably um, highly organised. Um, I looked at um, the disability. We worked in the field of disability. Um, there's five words, just five words on that logo, disabilities twice. So that must be really important to the charity. Um, I looked at the title, um, Disability Challenges, that's the name of the organisation, um, but Challenges was boldened out, so that must mean that Challenges is more important than the actual name itself. Okay, got that. Um, the strap line, Children Challenging Disability. I didn't know what that meant. I couldn't think what that might mean. That really foxed me, really confused me. Um, so I parked that. And then the star. Oh, probably thought that was a shooting star, but of hope maybe. This was a really carefully thought through logo that at the time when it was launched was hugely relevant to the organisation. But the organisation, like most organisations, had looked at its marketplace, had changed the way they did things, and things were different. So when I first arrived, this is what I saw. I was seriously humbled by the sense of energy, passion, enthusiasm, noise, vibrancy that the play and youth workers that run challenges, that operate throughout challenges, that make things happen, were full of whether they were volunteers or whether they were staff, the hundreds of play and youth workers were critical to that organisation and they made so much noise, so much noise. They weren't sensible at all. They were really noisy, wild, wacky people. And that's the fun of challenges because that's what we do. We're about providing real fun, real energy, real passion. Um, and that was very important. There was a real mismatch with that logo that I'd seen. And I wasn't the only one. 
So many of people that we worked with were confused by what we were telling people that we did and the way we did it. As I got closer to the organisation and learnt more about it, I learned one of the underlying principles that I kind of like to leave with you and, and, and hopefully impress upon you because this is something that we hold really, really dear to our heart and it's highly unusual. It shouldn't be now, but it is. This is a non-exclusion policy. So, a child, a young person with a disability, however complex that impairment might be, however challenging their behaviour might be, all disabilities are welcome. We never ever exclude a child or a young person, however difficult that might be. And that is really unusual. I've not met another organisation that does that. Most disability organisations will work within a field. Most specialist providers will work to a level and when it gets too difficult, for good reasons very often, they'll say we can't do this anymore. But I challenge you to think about what, how that might help a young person. Perhaps a young person with really challenging behaviour, a specialist provider will turn around and say, mm, can't do this anymore, we're going to exclude you, exclude you permanently. How can that help that child and how can it help their family and how can it help society? It doesn't, it won't, it can't. It's really important that we work together to change the world and the people that are doing this are the player and youth workers. And if I tell you they're probably 17, 18, 19, 20, maybe as old as 25, but that's, that's when playing kind of stops for us adults, really. We don't, we don't carry on playing beyond that, that age. We're not very good at it. So we need to have young, vibrant play and youth workers. They're the ones that are changing the world. They come to the organisation, they know nothing about disability very often, and within a very short space of time, they're rolling around the floor with, with children that have really complex impairments, making it happen, making fun happen. And the way they do this is, I think, very unusual. They don't focus on the disability, the impairment, they focus on the child. So Jane and Peter both have epilepsy. They have very different kinds of epilepsy, different seizures, different medication. One has communication, one doesn't. One's a wheelchair user, one isn't. They both have different sets of parents with different communication needs, with different lines of support. How can knowing that that child has epilepsy help you? It won't, because they're very different children. What's really important is that you know that in order to play, Jane needs to have her medication. In order to play, Jane needs to be comfortable that you know how to support her. In order to play, she needs to eat this at this time. She needs to know that that's not going to upset her at that time. And you need to know what makes Jane tick, not that she has epilepsy. I think that all of those very, very complicated ideas around how the organisation worked needed to come together in our communications. And this is really um, the surprise um, that was, was wonderful because we had agreed that we needed to do some kind of rebrand around our communications. Um, we're a charity. There's no way we're going to spend the hundreds and thousands of pounds it will cost to achieve a rebrand um, in doing it properly, but we needed to do it properly. Um, we had built some lovely relationships with businesses through a business club that we set up and through parents who ran their own businesses and we managed to achieve a three-stage rebrand without spending a single penny. And it's a really exciting rebrand that I'm going to share a little bit with you. But we started with um, research and we had um, an agency do a comprehensive um, research programme with us. And in doing so, they learnt a huge amount about the way that they operated. They changed and flexed the way they did things, and they got a lot out of doing that with us and for us. We then moved on to the design, and we got a design agency to do that. Again, not paying a single penny, and they learnt a, a lot about team working, about fundraising, about some of the CSR programmes that they were running. Um, it was two-way all the way through this journey. Um, and in the research, um, if I show you a before and after, I'm really hoping that you're going to like the after, um, because a lot of work went into this. The first one we found in talking to hundreds of um, stakeholders that actually our initial logo was dull, it was inappropriate and irrelevant, that actually the young people very often that we worked with felt very strongly that they weren't disabled. 
that's great, inclusion's happening, wonderful. They felt they weren't disabled, so why were we stamping it twice on our logo? It had to come out. We learnt that actually children challenging disability was a wonderful kind of pretext for the organisation some time ago, but wasn't relevant anymore. We needed to say what we did. We need to be clear about what we did and why. Um, we found that there were some holy grails that people clung onto the word challenges. That was what they knew, that was what they loved. It was a lifeline for them, a very much an extension of their family life. So that had to stay. The orangeness that you see that isn't in the original logo, but actually is littered all the way through our organisation with T-shirts, buses, banners, everything we do is kind of orange, needed to be in there. And the star... The star was considered a kind of hospice star in the first one, so associated with death. We don't do that, we do fun. So we need, although the, the star was something that really gave all the wrong messages, it was really dear to people's heart. They wanted the star, so we had to hang on to that somehow, and we're giving it a new character. It's got a bit of a sparkle about it. Um, and we needed to share the fact that we were inclusive throughout, that we, we work with children and young people. Um, and so our strapline is serious about fun for all disabled children and young people. I think I'd probably agree that it's not the snappiest of <coughs> strap lines, but hopefully it says what we do. Um, which is really important for us. And then we had a launch. And you know how um, big, um, very sexy, um, expensive organisations have amazing launches of something like a brand? Um, they'll, they'll be, obviously, there'll be a press release, there'll be new documentation, there'll be T-shirts and pens, and there'll be um, TV adverts, maybe, um, the press will cover it, etc. We wanted a launch, but we're a charity. We can't have a fancy pants launch. Um, but we are launching this, we're launching this properly and our new logo is going on the side of a rocket up into space because a local satellite um, centre um, has an additional need for payload on the side of this satellite and they kindly, working with us, um, agree to put our logo on this rocket. So from Kazakhstan, this has been launched into the sky properly, a proper launch of a brand. And um, I, I think that, um, I hope that I have shared a few kind of very basic principles around the way we work. Um, and I hope that um, you've kind of heard them because they're not difficult really. Um, a charity is fundamentally a business and needs to be a business to operate. Um, but although they're very different, they have different sets of um, objectives, they work in different ways and they complement each other beautifully. So the charity business relationship is, is, is fantastic. Um, we all get a lot out of that and we can all work together to achieve a, a huge amount. Um, but the underlying principle of the organisation I happen to work for believes that that actually children and young people, whether they have an impairment or not, belong together. That um, non-exclusion has to work and we have to take this and we have to make this happen and we have to change the world we live in forever. Thank you very much.